So we'll start off with the track sounding like this. In the end, it'll sound like this. So today we're going to do some mix polishing uh, DIY mastering and it'll start off by getting a, a reference master and then we'll do some EQ work, we'll do compression and then move on to some soft clipping or saturation limiting and then some naughty clipping. More about that later. Okay, so the first thing to say before we get stuck in is that I'm going to do this from start to finish just in Ableton's plugins. Um, uh, if you have uh, limiters, compressors, EQs you prefer to use, then you can use those instead. It's this, The principles will be the same thing. So getting straight into this, the first thing we do when uh, we, we do this sort of uh, mix polishing or, or, or sort of DIY mastering work would be to listen, um, listen to the original. So this is a pre-master that I bounced out as a WAV um, with uh, with very little on the master channel and it only peaks at about minus three decibels on, on the output meter. The thing I have below is a reference master and I, I like to use uh, things that I already have mastered of my own to uh, AB with so that it gives me a reference point to work to because I'm not a professional mastering engineer and I need uh, as, as much of a reference point as I can get to um, give me a good idea of frequencies and dynamics and so on. So we'll just listen back to the reference. <laughs> which is obviously a lot louder. <laughs> um, I might back that off a little bit as I work, just um, until the levels on my, on my own master start to uh, increase. So I've had a little listen. Uh, I'll just have one more listen. So it's 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 sounding pretty close at this point. Um, it's what it's missing is that in your face quality. Um, it's important to try and get your mix as close as you can before you start mastering. The more you can do that, the better the end result of mastering should be. Um, you shouldn't have to, you know, drive yourself nuts mastering. If you are, you should probably go back to the mix. We'll start off with some EQ. EQ8 in Ableton. And an important thing is control or right click and click on oversampling. Oversampling will give uh, just slightly higher quality results. It takes up a wee, wee bit more CPU power, but we don't, we don't need to worry about that. We're, we've only got one channel going. Um, we're not going to run into... Uh, problems with it with the processor. Cool. Um, I can see on, on the uh, graphic visualizer on the EQ it shows us our frequencies. There is quite a lot of bass content and most of us do mix a little bit bass heavy so right off the bat I'm going to roll off uh, maybe 3 dB below 100 Hertz just to back off the bass frequencies a bit because I think we all mix bass heavy but in the end the less bass there is, the louder we can get our master. However, you don't want to go too far because your master will start to sound thin if you've got too much bass, so it's a, it's a balancing act. Um, I'm just going to AB once more with my reference. <laughs> to my ears, there isn't enough um, high mids, so the sort of real nasty sort of frequencies um, that, that give def sort of crispness and definition to the sound. I want those to be louder. And my rule of thumb is that I, I always go for low Q values when I'm boosting frequencies in this way. So I'm going to go for a Q value of maybe 0.25, something like that, and just boost a few dB just to try and get those higher mids a bit, a bit more obvious. <laughs> And I'm going to AB as I go. 
maybe slightly less Q because I'm boosting too much of the treble and too much of the lower mid. So it's just using your ears to get that tone shaping happening. So I've got my basic sort of uh, frequency balance that I want. I'm going to now uh, move on to compression and one of the real great strengths of Ableton with regard to uh, bus processing or mastering work is their glue compressor, which um, I think is licensed or bought from Cytomic, who did this uh, copy of the SSL bus compressor, which is classic compressor, which is great for uh, drums or full mixes or so on. I would use uh, a, a version of the SSL, a, a, an emulation uh, generally when, when working with a master bus and the settings I would start with would be uh, the longest attack and the shortest release. So 30 and 0.1 and a ratio of two. I find four is a little bit aggressive um, and I'll need to bring my threshold down a bit so I'll just do that immediately. And uh, we'll be aiming to compress, I'd say about three or four decibels. So the, the needle needs to be hitting in and around just before the, the five mark there, I'm pointing with the mouse. And we use the makeup. The makeup should be about the same value as if I'm compressing by right? so about four decibels or so. And I'm gonna bring it in and out to see what it sounds like. So it really does glue that mix together. Um, and I'm pretty happy with, with the attack and release settings I've got there. I, I moved the release around a little bit, but really I think that's fine. So we move on now to the area of saturation or uh, soft clipping, which can be a slightly tricky area to get into because we're in effect talking about distorting on our master channel, um, which sounds scary, but if, it, if it's done carefully, it can, it can really help the master along. Um, from having sent off uh, stuff to mastering engineers and getting it back, um, they are using really first class equipment, but even then they, there's a certain amount of saturation takes place and that's part of the improving the loudness. So we be careful when we're doing this, but it, it, as far as I'm concerned, some might disagree, but this is an important part of, of getting the master to where it needs to be. I've created a little uh, rack in Ableton, which um, it's all it is is the Ableton saturator um, using its soft clip function and that's all it actually uses. And I have a little knob here which it just enables me to uh, balance out my input and output levels with one knob, uh, which is kind of handy. So uh, we'll start on zero and I'll just turn it up until we start to hear a thickness happen in the sound, but before we get to what sounds like the sound breaking up or distorting. So here we go. So as you can hear, it's quite a subtle effect, um, you know, even though we're talking about clipping. Um, so I've t turned up to, it says 50 here, it's, it's, it's not actually the true value, it's about 4.7 4 decibels we are um, on the uh, input gain. But it's, I can hear the sound is just starting to, it's just starting to fatten up a bit um, without affecting the sound too much. So moving along, we're actually coming close to the end of this chain. Um, a limiter is, is what we need now. My preferred settings would be about, about 10 milliseconds. Or as close as I can get it. Um, and we'll first bring the scene back to zero. And limiters. Limiters are a, are, a, are a dangerous thing to work with, um, especially with dance music, because with like EDM, house, whatever you want to call it, we have our kick drum, and the, the attack of that kick drum 
still needs to be maintained and uh, it's worth trying to get your loudness levels up there with things like compression, saturation, and when you hit the limiter, you don't want to use it too much because it's going to take away what you call your transients, which take away the punch. So we, we just want to tickle the limiter, as we might say. <laughs> About that much is as far as I like to go. We're, we're limiting maybe one or two decibels. Maximum, there might be a big peak come through, it might be three, but you just don't want to take away from those transients that are all, all important part of the drum impact. So final, final step, we have the aforementioned Naughty Clipper, which um, <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a silly name, but basically what this is is um, proper digital distortion, which is a more dangerous thing. But this is my ears have told me this, and a bit of things I've read, researched that with mastering, I think there are a lot of engineers here on the when they've gone through their their lovely analog mastering suite. Um, I think some, but not all, engineers they they go they they're hitting their their in their inputs coming back into whatever they record into and quite hot and and there is some clipping takes place and I think that is part of the sound of a lot of dance music masters anyway. Um, and this is what this little rack does. It It is, just to show you very quickly, it's the saturator which is doing digital clipping and I actually have a limiter which is taking care of some, some um, it's just managing some output levels at the end. Um, but all you need to worry about is my ouch knob. <laughs> this is a very subtle effect as it turns out. It sounds nasty, but it's 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 adding just a little bit of bite and presence to your master. Now, that's pretty much um, it in terms of the, the chain. I'm just going to do a little bit of AB comparison with my uh, reference master. It's sounding pretty close. I think I'm going to push it a little bit harder on the limit. I'm pretty happy with that in terms of volume levels. Now you might have noticed I've worked with exactly the same bit of music through the whole thing. Um, it would take a lot of time to go through each bit of the mas of this master and uh, and make sure it's all okay, but that is exactly what you should do in your own time. Something important that I will cover though is just listening back to the quieter sections and the danger with mastering your own stuff um, is that you can end up getting the quiet sections too loud and you've got to listen very carefully to whether that's happening and if it is you can manage your uh, you can manage your the input levels or even just do some volume automation on your on your clip. So I can hear as it drops there, as the bass kicks in, there's still impact and that's what's important. Uh, final final little thing is that when I when all this has been done I like to just flick back and uh, AB it with my original just to make sure that the, the, the original sound hasn't been compromised too much so if I create a group and then I'll add a utility at the end and I'm going to bring the gain down and what that means is that all the gain I've added uh, is going to be moved down and then 
I'm going to turn the group on and off. Make sure I'm in. I'm going to turn it on and off. I'm not getting too much difference in the volume level, but it's, it's giving me an idea of how to change the flavor of the sound. I don't like the way there's so much less space, I'm going to add a little bit more space to my mouth too. Maybe a little bit less limiter. See, I've, I've, I've noticed some of the transients have gone. So that A being has enabled me to just um, make sure that my master is reasonably faithful to the original. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That's some basic DIY mastering or mix polishing in about 10 minutes. And what that means is that it can be ready to go on SoundCloud or play out in clubs or give to DJs as a demo. Um, we've used Ableton's plugins to do some EQ work. We've done some overall compression. We've done some saturation, clipping, limiting. And that's made sure that the music can be the best it possibly can.